throughout the day, you've done a deep dive into the challenges and the future of direct air capture. But I want to bring things back now, back to a focus on the big picture. Because as a climate scientist, I know that direct air capture is one key piece of silver buckshot in the fight against climate change. Why do we need silver buckshot? It's because we know that we're conducting an unprecedented experiment with the only home we have. This is a sobering reality that has to anchor our discussions. We know that today the planet is warming faster than any time in human history. We also know that as far back as we can go in the history of this planet, we've never seen this much carbon going into the atmosphere this quickly, not even at the time of the most rapid warming 55 million years ago. The primary reason for this warming is very clear. It's human emissions of heat trapping gases. But where do these gases come from? That's where it gets complicated because they come from all kinds of sources that are woven throughout society and even throughout our daily lives. You get the picture. And that is why when it comes to climate solutions, there is no silver bullet. But the good news is, is there is a lot of silver buckshot and direct air capture is one of those pieces of silver buckshot. So let's look at the categories of climate solutions. What do we truly need to do to tackle this issue at scale? I think of the atmosphere like a swimming pool and the level of CO2 in the atmosphere is like the level of water in the swimming pool. Back at the beginning of the industrial revolution, our toes could just touch the ground. But that's when we stuck a giant hose into our swimming pool and we've been turning that hose up year by year. We turned it down 7% during the first year of the pandemic, but we turned it right back up again the year after that. And because of that, the water in the pool is rising and not only is it rising, it's rising faster and faster. So what is the first thing we have to do? We have to turn the hose off. But our swimming pool also has a drain. The drain takes carbon out of the atmosphere. We have to make the drain bigger. And then the third thing we have to do is we have to learn how to swim because our toes don't touch the ground anymore. Those are the three categories of actions we need. So what type of solutions fit into turning off the hose? The first one is one that all too often we skip right over. Energy efficiency, also reducing waste, especially food waste, and changing our behavior so we don't need as much energy. That's one way to turn off the hose. We also can turn off the hose by transitioning away from fossil fuels to clean energy. And we need to do that as quickly as possible. We can improve our land use and agricultural practices to turn them from sources of heat trapping gases often into sinks. And then lastly, we do have carbon capture and storage, which basically diverts the hose before it goes into the swimming pool and puts that water or CO2 elsewhere. These are the different categories of ways we can turn off the hose. What about making the drain bigger? Well, a big part of that drain, in fact, the majority of that drain is nature. We have too much carbon in the atmosphere, but putting that carbon back into soil and ecosystems is actually good. So protecting the ecosystems we already have is number one. Restoring degraded ecosystems, number two. Regenerating ecosystems. This is where something like tree planting comes in. It's not at the top of the list. There's a lot to do in addition to that. Climate smart agriculture. For the country of Canada, our biggest potential for natural climate solutions is actually not in forestry, it's in agriculture. When you put together all of these solutions around the world, up to a third of the hose could be taken up by making the drain bigger through nature. But nature is finite. So this is where direct air capture fits in to make that drain just a little bit bigger because we know that every little bit of carbon counts and anything we can do to make that drain bigger will make a difference. But we can't forget adaptation, learning how to swim, because we know that although climate change affects all of us, it doesn't affect us all equally. So to paraphrase John Holdren, we basically have four choices. Turn off the hose, make the drain bigger, learn how to swim, or suffer. There is no silver bullet. We must do as much as we can of each of the first three choices in order to avoid 
as much suffering as we possibly can. And the science is clear. If we don't turn off the hose, we will not reach our targets. Not just the one and a half degree target, none of them. We have to reduce our emissions as much as possible as soon as possible. But the science is also clear. The more carbon that we take out of the atmosphere, the lower the level of water in the pool. The less adaptation is required, and most importantly, the less suffering there will be. All of these are essential steps to a better future. We need every single piece of silver buckshot we have, and we need to deploy these solutions as fast as we can, as much as we can. Because to quote the IPCC, every bit of warming matters. But there's one more thing we can't lose sight of. And that's the fact that we face multiple crises. We face a climate crisis, a pollution crisis, where one in six deaths around the world occur prematurely as a result of pollution. We face a biodiversity crisis, inequity, injustice, and war. All of these lead to suffering, and climate change is, as the US military refers to it, a threat multiplier in that it takes the impacts of all of these other crises and it makes them worse. We don't have time to tackle these crises individually. And so that's why it is absolutely essential that we invest in climate solutions that also, that also what? That also give us cleaner air and cleaner water. That also protect us from disasters like storms, wildfires, and floods. That also improve and invest in our physical and mental health. That also provide more, not less, affordable energy that reduce our gender, racial, and socioeconomic inequalities, that create healthy ecosystems and foodscapes, solutions that give us a safer, a better, and a more just world. So when we find solutions that tick multiple boxes, the only question I have is, what are we waiting for? How do we get this giant boulder of climate action, which is already rolling down the hill in the right direction with millions of hands on it, how do we get it going faster? And the answer to that is something that's so simple, we often overlook it. How do humans ever do anything together without communicating about it first? So as you leave, take the information that you have heard here, take the inspirational stories that you've heard, take the challenges that you've heard and share them. Share them with people that you work with. Share them with people who are looking at investing in climate solutions. Share them with researchers who are lending a hand. Share them with business people, engineers. Share them with teachers. Share them with your kids. We need every single person's hand on that giant boulder, pushing it down the hill as fast as we can, because I'm convinced that together we truly can build a better future.